Howdy do! Today I'm gonna run out of ink. Actually, I run out of ink every two to three days, but today you're gonna watch as my ink gets spent. Using grade school arithmetic, I'll calculate the endurance of the ink based on how many pages I was able to write. I have a strange routine. Every day, I transcribe great or good books according to my research needs, which is not equivalent to a deep study, but it lights up my brain, and I can't start my day without it. So, my own writing velocity is not the same as yours, but these calculations can apply to you if you make adjustments for your own style. For example, I write with a light hand and an extra fine nib. If you write with a heavy hand, you'll run out of ink quicker. It's had telling, not knowing, but that one's kind of obvious. I'm looking for the world's most economical ink, so if this kind of thing doesn't bore you to tears, I invite you to join me on my quest. And when I say economical, I mean an ink that is fairly inexpensive, but that also lasts a long time. Every ink has a different viscosity. They have different qualities. So I'm looking for an ink that works for my hand, but one that's also affordable. So I'm not going to be crushing blueberries and mixing it with vinegar to make my own super cheap ink. Because A, blueberries actually aren't that cheap, and B, it's going to ruin my pen! Anyway, before you judge or condemn me for transcribing other authors' work, let me just say I don't do it to emulate their style. I do it to get my hand moving. I don't even see it as a form of study. Studying requires rereading, and I may do another video on that topic. Sometimes I do stop when I come to something interesting, like a new word or a bibliographic annotation I'm unfamiliar with. I keep a handmade lexicon by my side and a list of other books mentioned in the book I'm transcribing, which I want to look at later. Here's a piece of trivia for you. Hunter S. Thompson transcribed The Great Gatsby in its entirety in order to learn how a good novel is written. I'm not the only one who does this kind of thing. Although I do think Hunter S. Thompson typed The Great Gatsby. I don't think he did it by hand. Ernest Hemingway had a problem with writers who typed exclusively. He said there was a difference between writers and typists, but I don't... I don't know exactly what that difference was. Anyway, when I transcribe, I go sentence by sentence until I finish the book. No shorthand, no abbreviations. If this seems tedious to you, then you never had a decent pen. A good pen can make writing anything a pleasure. So what's this channel about? It's about ink. I thought it'd be interesting to make a mathematical log of how long I can write before running out of ink. I will provide the exact amount of ink I used, the name of the ink, and how many pages I was able to write before running out. If I think of it, I'll also include how many words I was able to write. Of course, it would be an average. So it's not totally scientific. Everyone writes differently. I skip lines. I use inexpensive filler paper and sometimes deep discount composition books. But you can follow along and even make your own calculations according to what you use. If your journal is an A5 size notebook, just divide what I'm doing by half. If you write smaller, estimate the difference in how many words you write per page compared to me. I handwrite about 95 words per page because I'm using that blank white space at the top and I can fill three lines into that space. And I should say, I'm able to write 95 words when I'm transcribing C.S. Lewis because he happens to use monosyllabic words a lot, although he does have quite a bit of $10 words. That's why I have to keep writing down definitions. The book I'm transcribing is The Discarded Image by C.S. Lewis. It's about medieval cosmology, and I highly recommend it. I just found out that C.S. Lewis did his own translation of the Aeneid, but 
we don't have it in its entirety because when he died, his brother burned most of his papers just to take care of things, I guess. Anyway, I am about to run out of ink. You'll see it coming up pretty quick. I enjoy using a binder with filler paper when I do this kind of work because it's a perfectly flat surface. There's a lot of companies out there that make notebooks that claim to lie flat, but they don't lie flat. The only the only notebook I ever had that actually was able to lie flat was a Moleskin Chapters book because the binding is sewn at different areas but the thing about moleskin is the ghosting is ridiculous you can never ever use the back side of those pages and I just don't like the feel of it it feels like paper that's synthetic you know oh here it is I'm about to run out here it comes are you ready for this oh watch me struggle A pen on the verge of running out of ink is like a woman on the verge of the change. There's always a final swan song where the ink suddenly seems to be abundant, the same way we see change of life pregnancies. That's what I call fecundity. So you see here, I thought I was out? and yet it keeps going. And then it runs out again. I have to twist the section a little bit. Sometimes it also helps if you just set the pen down for a few minutes and let things settle down. It gets another second wind. Another word on the perfect ink. I'm still looking for that perfect ink. Oh, and there you see, it's done. Spent. The ink is spent. So I'm still looking for that perfect ink, which, like the perfect poem, may not exist. Robert Graves said, the day a perfect poem is completed, the world will end. And you see, whenever I'm finished with a session of writing, I drop the pen like it's a mic. Here you see I'm counting my pages. I had some trouble trying to count from front to back, but it's sometime, somehow it's easier to go back to front. And I've taken all my measurements, and next I will explain them. My pen, as you see here, is a Lamy Safari charcoal black extra fine steel nib and I love this pen see how pretty that black nib is I love it because it controls the ink flow so well it just lets the teeniest tiniest thinnest line of ink out which preserves my ink or I should say it extends the life of the ink and I don't necessarily love the design of this. The or I shouldn't say the design. The design is awesome. The engineering is amazing. But the aesthetics, it's rather plain. But it does the job and it's affordable and I have I have used pens that are more expensive than this and I don't like them as much as this one because of its performance. You don't have to apply any pressure at all which is true of every fountain pen, in theory. But also, it has just the right amount of tooth on the page. And I happen to be one of those people who really enjoy the feeling of hearing that feedback. It's part of the pleasure of writing. I mean, it's writing, of course, is a unique activity that lights up a certain part of your brain that doesn't get lit up otherwise. But there are so many different aspects to it. It's it's the writing, it's the thinking, 
it's the color of the ink. You know, we we are affected by colors, especially ones that we're fond of. I happen to really love purple ink to write with. And also it's the sound. The sound of the of the nib on the page. It's like chalk on a chalkboard. I love that sound. Not when there's a piece of grit in the chalk and it scrapes. But it's to me it's the sound of civilization. It's the sound of humanity. It's what what's that song by Donovan? It's the the hurdy gurdy man. <laughs> anyway, love the pen. It has a little ink window. Not sure if you can see right here that when you hold it up to the light, it it's supposed to tell you how much ink you have left. However, it is it's not even close to being able to tell you how much ink you have left because look at how far up it is. There's always a bunch of ink down here in the feed. So this one, I happen to have a cartridge in it. And the cartridge is Monteverde Purple. And it's specially designed for Lamy. They have, it's an extra long cartridge, which is nice. Means I can go for longer without changing it out. However, I enjoy changing ink. I, I like taking care of my pens. I'm one of those people. I'm a giver. I'm a caregiver. <laughs> I like to take care of pens. The only thing about a cartridge that I don't really like is that when you're running low, you have no way to force some more ink down into the feed except for by squeezing it. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm so thrifty. I don't like squeezing cartridges. I don't like squeezing them a lot because... I'm afraid I might wear them down, and I am one of those people who refills cartridges. Uh, I just don't like throwing things away. Especially especially a cartridge that is proprietary, and you can't use any other cartridge in this kind of a pen. I do have a converter, and I will probably show you in another video how much easier it is to just turn the knob and force ink out when you're running low on a converter. So that's the ink. I'm not really in love with the color of it. It's purple. It's like a basic purple. Just a little bit washed out. I don't mean to say that in a negative way. I mean, I don't pass judgment on colors. <laughs> But when I'm writing, I really prefer like a a darker purple, a more blackish purple. The paper I'm using is good old Mead filler paper. This paper is college ruled. It's reinforced. Costs three dollars and ninety nine cents for a hundred sheets. That means you get two hundred pages front and back. And so far. With this transcription, I'm halfway through the book. I'm on page 110 of 223 pages. And I have used three of these packages. I'm going to be flipping this over soon turning it around and writing on the other side and look at how awesome this this ink is there's virtually no ghosting because I'm using an extra fine nib and because the color is kind of light but that, I mean that's just awesome I, I don't mind when stuff goes through I do mind when it bleeds through but I really like to be able to use the back side of my pages so there's that my paper. And beware when you're ordering paper from the internet, beware of the difference between pages and sheets. Because some people will say pages and what they mean are the front and back. So you think you're getting a 40 page notebook, but it's really just 20 sheets. Anyway, 
this this paper is 20 pounds in weight it's the same as copy paper and I think it's quite good the the pen works or I'm sh I should say the nib just glides across it it's perfectly fine when you get into like the 15 pound quality paper that's when an extra fine nib can tend to dig into the page and prevent you from being able to write on the other side. As you see, I skip lines. I skip lines for the freedom to do with my descenders what they will, but also to give myself a little bit more freedom when I'm writing on the other side of the page. So let's do some math. One full cartridge, let me get my cartridge, ready to go. Math time. One full cartridge of this proprietary Monteverde purple made for Lamy holds, or I'm sorry, it is, it weighs 2.32 grams total, and that's with the cartridge and the ink. When it's empty, it weighs 1.03 grams, so... I could assume that you subtract 103 from 2.32 and you get 1.29. I'm going to say milliliters. I know it's not the same. Um, maybe in the future I can do a project where I show you the actual liquid weight <laughs> of the cartridge. Anyway, so that's the ink I used. There is some a problem with my math. Can you guess what it is? If you're a fountain pen user, you will know that once you start running out of ink, you can do what you can to get the last drops out, but there's always going to be a little bit left in the feed. And what I should have done is I should have weighed the section with the feed and the cartridge before I started writing and then weigh it once I appeared to be out of ink. And I shall do that next time. This is all... Oh! This is all a work in progress. So, next. On average, I was able to write for 61.5 pages using that 1.29 milliliters of ink. So if you divide pages over ink, you get 47.67. So I was able to write 47.67 pages per one milliliter of ink. I don't know about this scoring system, but if I had to give it a score, it would be 47.67. But there's another factor. There is another factor. And that is, I write bigger than most people write. I write with extra fine ink. If you're using a broad nib, you're obviously going to be using more ink. And you'll be able to write less pages and less words. So I counted up my words. And on average, one page of my handwriting is 95 words. So you multiply that by 61.5 pages, you get 5,781, divide it by the ink used, 1.29 milliliters, and for final score you get 4,481.4 words per milliliter. And that ain't bad. I think that's a pretty good endurance. Now on to something fun. I came across a word in the discarded image which is a fine book I highly recommend it and this word I didn't know allow me to read to you Albertus Magnus gives rulings about the lawful and unlawful use of planetary images in agriculture the burial in your field of a plate inscribed with the character or hieroglyph of a planet is permissible to use it with invocations or suffumigations is not and that is taken from the Speculum Astronomiae, chapter 10. Don't you love Albertus Magnus? I just love him. He's, he's clearly, he was a very intelligent man since he was the tutor of Thomas Aquinas. 
But then he says things like this, like you can take a plate with a planet inscribed on it and bury it in your backyard. And that's completely orthodox. But oh, no, no, don't do an invocation with it. Don't do any suffumigations. I didn't know what suffumigation meant, so I looked it up. And lo and behold, in the dictionary, it defines the word with the word itself. Don't you hate that? So what I did was I, tr I looked it up in the etymology dictionary, and lo and behold, it's not there. So I tried to break it down. The word comes from Latin. Suff comes from sub, which means below. Fume comes from fumus, which means smoke. And gate comes from the verb igare, to drive. So we put it all together and you get the act or process of suffumigating as in magic rites or in treatment. So I think this is something similar to what they call smudging. I'm not really sure what that's all about. I kind of avoid getting too deep into that kind of thing only because the Catechism of the Catholic Church says to avoid occult practices. And the Holy Mother Church is smarter than me, so I'm going to do what she says. So that is all. Until next time, long may your big jib draw. Yeah.